So eventually the, the GG, the, the, the watch, um, this whole, my whole purpose in talking about it is to kind of really figure out what its origins are. And eventually I'm going to be getting into why I think it, you know, how it got out. If it, if it was at ETA, as I believe it was after being originally made as an Omega prototype, if it was at ETA, then how it got out of ETA. Um, that also ends up kind of relating to the personal history of, uh, that I've been reading about of the, the personalities and the people at uh, the Swatch Group and ETA. So, but for today, it's about the, the, the this video is about the, the case construction and the way that cases are normally made um, is they're pressed out of a plate of the raw metal. So you take like a bar of gold or a bar of steel or a, a flat, and then a, a giant punch just punches out the profile of the case. So if you have a case that's um, that has lugs, that's pretty simple. It, it punches out the lug shape. And then, it, but if you don't have lugs, if you have a shroud, it, you, you have to use a different uh, method. So let me see if I can show you some stuff here. So this is a Tagger video about case making. You can see also all, all the pieces are stamped. These, these are stamps for like base plates and stuff bridges um but the case yeah so the first th step about the case is like a flat of, of uh in this case steel but it could also be gold and then it's punched right here you can see a punch just going uh right through the metal and punching out that shape and then that shape is placed in a in a uh basically like a mold or a form they keep squeezing it like they know exactly what volume has been punched out and then they develop a series of of uh dies i think it would be called dies that they push it into and, it, and that keeps shaping it again and again until it's the correct shape now another way to deal to do that is to and and, and there's usually usually a combination of that pressing it into dies and also um cnc machining which is tooling like this that's putting in very precise uh sizes for, and angles and everything so the thing about the the gg is that because of the shroud over the lugs you can't punch through that area and so what they did was they they molded it out of a out of a they made the blank they poured the blanks as as in like pouring a gold ingot into a mold that's already the rough profile of the watch and that also includes the the three on each side or a total of six um, bumps, which which uh, cause the recesses in the final case where the strap attaches. And that's because while it would be conceivably possible to machine out these bits, because there's no way to get a tool into the curve in the back unless it's a very tiny tool with a lot of, a lot of time and a very fragile tool, they, it's easier and more cost effective to to do this casting first. So the insides of the of the under the lugs is the is the part of the ca of the watch where you can still see that casting, and then everything else about the watch would be machined um, into it afterwards, and possibly some also pressing, uh, like like in the Tagore uh, thing. Um, now, the reason that that's interesting also is that the, the watch that they eventually released, which is this one, at, like assuming my hypothesis is correct, that the, the GG was a prototype for this, this watch didn't have shrouded lugs and therefore it didn't need, this one is different, this is a, a Omega DeVille that did have shrouded lugs. I'll talk about that in a minute. But basically the, this Seamaster Cosmic with the regular lugs didn't need to be cast first. Um, but what's interesting is the ad for the Seamaster Cosmic 
states that it it was hewn. My mouse is not working. What the heck? Um, it's this is the the Gerald Genta design C shape case for the Seamaster Cosmic, which uses regular straps and does not need to be cast, precast, because it doesn't have shrouded lugs. But in the ad, they said the new Seamaster Cosmic is hewn from a solid gold or steel ingot. Um, ingot, the word, I looked it up, and it's from the Old English ingotten, which means to pour. So it, it, it's it's... I don't think that they needed to pour this, but they there there's some evidence here that they they were celebrating the fact that they were starting to make cases out of ingots. And that's why the other case is interesting because the this case, which is the backside of the Omega DeVille from nineteen around nineteen sixty-nine, I think, um this does have shrouded lugs and this would have likely been the the base of it would have been cast before additional shaping and machining to to bring it to its final shape um and yeah so that's the that's that and then um this this case is interesting because this is a solid gold Seamaster Cosmic case, uh, the one that went into production and the one that this was likely a prototype for. And, the, and I just wanted to show you how production gold cases oftentimes, and this is something I thought about when I was bidding on this and wondering what the gold value was. Um, in a production case, they will often insert like a, a movement ring where as large as possible wherever they can so they don't they don't have to make that part out of solid gold and um in the production version of this they they did that and then they machined out also the the as much of the gold as possible so that it, it was still in the theory the case should still be sturdy but it's not like a solid block of gold like this is and one of the things when i was bidding on this i was like it's a prototype. It probably is solid gold. And the and the seller had said that it was, um, he had said the weight. So I, I, I did some math based on the weight and the weight of the movement and kind of calculated what the um, possible gold value would be. But if you're doing that with a watch that's not a prototype, like, like the, 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 my point here is um, you have to be careful because even solid gold watches are uh, the design to economize on the amount of gold that's in them. Um, for example, David Betcher, the, the UK um, expert on um, watermarks and hall, not watermarks, hallmarks, uh, he said that the minimum width is three tenths on a gold case. And this one theory was that the three ten here meant three tenths of a millimeter. It passes the test of being three tenths of a millimeter thick. But when I measured the thickness of this, it's actually 1.4 millimeters thick at its thinnest. So it's like five times thicker than the minimum at its thinnest, and everything else in it is solid gold. So it's a it's a very unusual and special watch in that respect, regardless of um, of the of its actual uh, provenance in terms of where it may have come from. So um, I think that the other thing I want to talk about is I went to this this shop called Bijutil in Geneva, which is a, they sell parts. It's, it's a hybridization of bijou, which means jewelry, and util, which means tool. Um, so it's jewelry tools. And this is a 750 stamp uh, the same size as the as the one on the watch and the and the buckle and the free ring. So I took the I took the watch to the shop with me and compared them to figure out the size. And it's interesting because in a previous video I had tried to figure out the size by kind of measuring it against something that the the index indice that I knew was 0.8 millimeter. And I 
decided it was one millimeter, but the reality is it was it's 0.5. It's a half millimeter, and the and that's the height of the letters. But the um, the reason it looked like a millimeter is because there's so much deformation of the gold when you press it in that it, it it actually affects a full millimeter around the the punch. So um, I had a little piece of radico here. Um, I wanted to. So the the point of the punch is to. The main thing I want to see with the punch. Um, is if they're still making the identical punches with the identical font and size, because it, I didn't know if, if they were or not. And um, it appears to me, I've already done this experiment. It does seem like the, where am I with the microscope? You're gonna have to look through here. So you can see there that's a little bit deeper than it needs to be. Um, there's nothing particularly interesting about this except maybe the, basically the, the, the numbers are very very similar to the numbers from whenever the GG was made in terms of font. And um, you can see in the construction of the stamp that somehow they get the, they get the number in it and then they grind down the sides and you end up with uh, a, a square around the the number, if you press it hard enough, you end up getting a. It, it's it's framed by the by whatever results from this um, grinding, and in this case, it's pretty skewed. The box around the 750. So this this stamp has its own kind of unique characteristics that it could be you could you could discover if. So two things were stamped by it if they were stamped that deep. And on the GG, <clears throat> the stamps have clues also in terms of t tiny microscopic chips in the tip of the of the stamp that was used on the GG that are consistent between two of the stamps. It's another way that it could, you, it, in theory, you could find if uh, something else from the same time in the same workshop was stamped with the same stamp. Um, so I just want to become more familiar with that stuff before I, well, basically the whole thing about this is just doing such a deep dive that I kind of understand the entire process, manufacturing, stamping, everything. And uh, I'm getting there. So, oh, there was one other thing. This is a Technos, a case for a Technos watch, which is from the 70s. And you can see the same. This probably also is a cast base that's been post-machined. Um, this is this is probably cast into it, too. Uh, so 
they do a combination of casting, pre-casting this logo, and then machining it, and then probably engraving or stamping these lighter uh, um, I'm not sure how difficult it would be to see if that's stamped or engraved. I think it's probably stamped. But um, the point is that the whole thing of like casting the uh, casting a watch by the 1970s, uh, everybody was doing it. This is another Technos that also has shrouded lugs and also has a cast base. This is not a monocoque, but it's still, even the front part of the case would need to be precast, I think, to get that shrouded lug effect. But those types of advances also are what why styles are able to change. And it's also how the integrated bracelet was able to come along because you can see from the GG how the integrated bracelet has the exact same problem of like you need to have multiple points to connect these these you know if the if the bracelet was metal you need to go into uh receptacles so those need to be cast in there again because of the difficulty of machining it um so that's that thanks for watching